Hey, how's it going? It's Callie T here. Did you miss me? And today I'll be talking about the 2017 live action adaption of Death Note, currently streaming on Netflix, along with the anime adaption, just in case you wanted to check that out. Mm -hmm. I have a few notes for this lovely live action adaption, so let's just go ahead and bounce right on into it. This film is a lot, and what I mean by that is that it tried to fit many elements into it in such a short amount of time. Like, I feel like the runtime for this is like 100 minutes or a little less than that. And when you're making a film adaption, the source material tends to give you a ton to work with. So sure, you obviously have to massively condense the story. In this case, the source material being the manga has like 12 or so volumes, and if you were to look at the anime adaption, it has like 37 episodes. So consequently, you have a lot of material that you just cannot fit into 100 minutes. Minutes, period. Plus by it being an adaption, it doesn't need to follow the source material like to a T, it's not a replica. Hence it's entitled to creative liberties to offer the audience new perspective, highlight different themes, etc, etc, etc. But how you go about doing that, aka the execution, is key. I mean you could have all the great source material to like dabble in and whatnot, but uh, yeah, you can still produce not the best films. And so when you change it up from the source, I feel like it should be something done meaningfully and with intention. I feel like a really great example of this aspect were a couple of the scenes in The Hunger Games, well, the first movie. So Susan Collins, the author, she doesn't really go into like what it actually takes to run a Hunger Games. And so what I thought the film did well was showing that perspective to the audience about being on the other side actually working a Hunger Game and being in the war zone with Katniss. So by doing so, you were able to see how every Thing came together. One of the more interesting things to me in the original story of Death Note was seeing the back and forth between Light and L, like, oh, what was Light gonna do? How is L gonna counter? And just seeing how they, like, you know, duke it out in their own ways. Um, but in this film, I felt that the interaction between the two was very much so downplayed a lot in general, but especially with the introduction of the new character Mia. Now, I am all for strong leading women in film, i.e., <gasps> It's just Mia's purpose for being so close to light, how she uses the book, and just how she's portrayed overall on screen. It just screams shallow. Like who hasn't heard of the story about the guy trying to get with the cheerleader? Like stuff like that just kept making me question like, why make these changes? And I felt like I never got an answer throughout the entire film. I mean, I feel like I can see how one could counter with like Misa as a character as a whole, but I feel like their ultimate reasons for like being so close to light and their backgrounds are like night and day. Which leads me to my other issues that the overall story, the building of plot points, and the characters are all over the place. And I personally mainly think that's due to the writing. I mean like the tone went from like melodramatic to comedic to grim all within a hot Seattle minute. And I I feel like half the time the writers didn't even know what to do with their characters. And I can't even like honestly say like, oh yeah, and the actors just made it like 10 times worse. Like, on the contrary, I felt the actors did the best they could with what they were given, especially since I felt like the pacing and the overall direction the actors were given just kind of felt as if like the studio was just rushing to like get whatever like was on their anime homage like list just scratched off, you know, as well as the film in general. And I thought the film was set up in a way initially to like really Really relay some like deep critical like thinking type level commentary on like what it meant to have like immense power but I feel like the film just never rationally got there and I feel like that you know that's such a shame because like I thought the film was just set up so nicely to do just that. Speaking of setting, I wasn't even mad that they had changed the setting to Seattle or that they had changed like some of the names around. Heck, I even preferred it because I had seen some of the casting done already and so I was like, oh okay, well if you're going to cast these people, change everything because at the end of the day, uh, yeah, you'd be whitewashing if you didn't. Even the casting I wasn't mad at or thought of it to be like a hard example of whitewashing. Like, it'd be different if the story was still set in Japan and they casted all white actors for it or if any of the characters were still of Asian descent, then yeah we'd have a problem. In fact, I only had one reservation about the casting and that's that I wish they would have included more of the Asian demographic into it. And now that I think about it, like I really don't like what one of the producers said about like this discrepancy. Um, in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, uh, Masi Oka, one of the producers of Death Note, had stated, and I um, quote, Our casting directors did an extensive search to get Asian actors, but we couldn't find the right person. The actors that we did go to didn't speak the perfect English, and the characters had to be rewritten. 
Mm. Like that statement right there drives me up a freaking wall. Like the film industry has no problem finding Asian actors when it comes to like playing the techie savvy nerds or geeks or business types or martial artists. But you're trying to tell me that like you can't find a single Asian actor who can speak fluent English? Like I don't know who's drinking the Kool-Aid that you think you are serving but um, mm, I'm calling that baloney sausage. And now that I got some gears turning, uh, the light character still uses the pseudonym of Kira. Like, it made sense in, like, the source material because it sounds like the English word for, like, killer, Kira. But, like, in English and in the Americanized version, uh, I'm just kind of like, um, that doesn't really make sense. Like, why not just flip it over to killer, like why still take the name? I mean like even if you like translated it literally, I feel like it means like um like a what is it? Like a like a ray of light or something like that. So it just makes no sense to use it. And you know, I think that's where I'm gonna end today's video because if I just like keep thinking about this, I feel like this death note is going to leave a bad taste in my mouth. Mm. And that's a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for stopping by. I truly appreciate it. As always, did you see the 2017 Death Note? What were your thoughts? If you did, please let your girl know in the comment section below. And stay tuned for more anime ass stuff coming your way. And hey, if you like this video, please let me know by hitting that like and subscribe buttons. And that's it for me. Thank you again for sharing a part of your day with me. And I hope the rest of your day is youthful. <laughs> Until next time. I love like this Black Panther mug um yeah this is just not like practical as a mug like do you see like all this water just will like little 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 like drip on you like this is just no like Black Panther we gotta work on your mugs